is time speeding up or slowing down? Let me know in the comments if the next three weeks leading up to the release of Farm Sim 25 is going to go by agonizingly slow or fly by in the blink of an eye. For me, it can't come soon enough. Some interesting stuff coming out this week related to NPCs, which we'll see at the very least on giant space maps, as well as a blog post on Thursday related to the various buildable items. If you missed that video, I'll have a link to that at the end of this video. Starting out this week's fact sheets is a brand new brand, and to be honest, I'm not even going to attempt it. Let's just call it Reed Lear. This might be the first forestry fact sheet that we've seen to date, but by no means is it the only forestry items in game. Remember to look at the game section on the Giants website for any updates to the brands and vehicles, as well as machines under each brand on Friday between now and release. The FH16RULHKR is a Volvo truck frame with a Reed Lear log transport system mounted. I'm really bad at guessing the size with respect to logs in meters, but if I were to guess, I would say that any image, we see here eight meter logs being loaded. Now, unless Giants nerf logs in FS25, it won't take too many loads to earn the $221,000 back for the purchase of this vehicle. Engines range from 600 to 780 horsepower, meaning the players should have no issue at all in navigating the hills while transporting a full load of logs to the market. While the truck has a top speed of 55 miles per hour, it's advisable to take the turns at a much more reasonable speed, else you find yourself on the side. While empty, it has a weight of 15 tons. Loaded down with logs, it's hard to say how much weight you might have to contend with. Now, the loading crane on the RUL HKR will permit the loading not only of logs on the F-16 truck, but also on the RUH-327 log trailer. At $68,000, it is a good addition to the RUL HKR or a nice standalone log trailer, which is how I would likely have used it if I wasn't totally burned out on logging from my days in FS-17 and early FS-19. Lastly, I'm definitely not a tree expert. But does anyone want to venture a guess as to what kind of tree we see here being loaded onto the truck? Oh boy, my title slide for this week is a Kloss Zerion 12, the largest tractor in Kloss's lineup, having a 585 horsepower engine and a fairly fast road speed given it's tracked at 31 miles per hour. Or should I say, at least it's shown here in tracks. If you check out the website or the spec sheet linked in the description, you'll see that it comes in either a wheeled or tracked version and looking at the spec sheet in some detail, the 50 kilometers or 31 mile per hour speed seems to be limited to the wheeled version with 653 horsepower engine as opposed to the 585 we see here on the fact sheet. Either way, this monster will tear up the fields hopefully a little bit less with tracks versus wheels, given the 26 ton weight just a little bit heavier than the sugar beet harvesters we saw last week. Now, quite a jump from the Zerion 12 is the Same Vertis 135 RV Shift, which also just so happens to be the largest tractor in its lineup. Now you may say tomato, I say tomato. We have here in the fact sheet 143 horsepower, but if we look at the spec sheet on the website, again, linked down in the description below, it says that it's going to be 143 horsepower with max boost. Now, ideally, this tractor is a very cost-effective solution at $103,500 price tag. Ideal for many jobs around the farm, including but not limited to grass work, as we see it here connected to the Samez XT390 side mower. Unlike the Kuhn GMD 4411 side mower from FS22, this mower will fold up vertically when it's not in a working position, making it a bit easier to drive around. Pair this with the front mower and take full advantage of the 3.9 meter working width, as well as the working speed of 13 miles per hour. A very budget friendly mower as well, ideal for the starting farmer for the cost of $16,500 and only requiring 100 horsepower to operate. Last but not least for today is the Grimmy Matrix 1800 planer. But take note, it's not your normal everyday planner. 
The Matrix 1800 is limited to just sugar beets and canola. Looking at the product page on the website, it appears that this is not a typo or a mistake on the fact sheet, but is indeed a very special purpose planter. Something else we'll likely have to wait and see in game, but the website talks about the planter being suited to mulch seeding with reduced tillage and conventional seeding after plowing. So the way I see that, it's going to be a no-till planter. We could just plant canola or sugar beets right after harvest without the need to cultivate. I kind of believe that that statement, given that the power requirement is 170 horsepower, this 12 row planter will unfold to a working width of 8.1 meters in 12 seconds and will hold 180 liters of seed while adding just 2.8 tons to the tractor via the three point hitch. Now I hope you do a lot of sugar beets or canola to make the $81,000 hit to your wallet worthwhile. Dun, dun, dun. Another one bites the dust. Will next week be a queen or a joker when it comes to the fact sheets? I think this week was all right with the Kloss taking the cake for the best overall fact sheet in the list. It's good to see Volvo's return. I know in a recent live stream there were some comments hoping to see Volvo return from the Platinum expansion and we hadn't really seen anything about them to date. Once again, a reminder to go check the Farming Simulator website under Games and then scroll down to see the little thumbnails of all the brands released to the game to date. Over 150 total brands in the end, and as of the recording of this video, we have seen an even 100. And then within each of those thumbnails will be a listing of each vehicle, implement, or tool that will be coming to Farming Simulator. We're going to see over 400 included in the base game when we're all said and done on November 12th. If you want to support the channel with pre-order of Farming Simulator 25, there's going to be a few ways to do so. First, those of you on PC can pick to purchase either the base game or the base game plus the year one season pass from the Giants eShop. There's going to be a link to that in the description. The other option would be to use the Amazon Avia link once again in the description to order the FS25 Collector's Edition. You get not only the base game but lots of other cool things including a USB ignition lock to turn on and off your vehicles from a real key. Those of you on PlayStation or Xbox, you can buy physical copies of the disc also to support the channel by picking once again the Amazon affiliate link down in the description for the collector's edition. Just be sure to pick the right product on the Amazon page. Lastly, hit that thumbs up button to tell YouTube that you thought this video was the best and that way it can recommend this video to more folks with similar viewing habits. In addition, each day we are slowly walking our way towards our goal of 50,000 subs. If you're not a subscriber, just think about that big red button as each individual one really does help us reach our goal. Just a few weeks left and I, for one, am just as pumped for the release as I was months ago when all this information came out during FarmCon. It's not too early to be talking about the launch party that I'll be hosting on release night. It's a great chance to experience FS25 for the first time with a group of like-minded players. While this video is a wrap, it's not a wrap for our FS25 coverage. Next week, we're going to have even more news about Farming Simulator 25 from the channel, and I've got something super special in the works that you're not going to want to miss. Until next time, happy farming.